okay so this was the last thing that we had uh, talked about yesterday that was the bet isotherm or the broner emmet teller isotherm so the advantage of this uh, isotherm was that it was it took care of multi layer adsorption no other isotherms that we have talked about before this for example in terms of langmuir isotherm freundlich isotherm or temkin isotherm they did not uh, deal with multi layer adsorption so this one talks about multi layer adsorption and as i had uh, mentioned to you yesterday again just get my pointer yeah that this adsorption isotherm is this equation fits all the known adsorption isotherms from type 1 to type 5 for various types of solids reasonably well and if i take the ratio of the partial pressure to the saturation partial pressure uh, and then this isotherm works the the bet isotherm works best in the range of this ratio be going from 0.05 to 0.35 at other ratios the values the, cur the curves are not perfect straight lines there seems to be a slight curvature that we have that we see when we do some real life examples you'll see that this actually happens so in this case if you want to find out whether a uh, and uh, experimental data that means an adsorption data where we have found out from experiments if this fits the bet isotherm or not so what we plot is it we plot the y, y axis that is pa by v p not minus pa uh, versus pa by p not and if it is a straight line then we can say that we can from the intercept you know the value of 1 by vm into c and from the slope we can you know the value of c minus 1 divided by vm into c so uh, and in, using the slope and the intercept we can individually calculate the values of vm what is vm vm is the volume of the gas adsorbed at monolayer and c is a constant for a particular system and for a particular temperature so when you have a a, a data an adsorption data most of the times what happens is that we do not know the, which isotherm is going to fit the data and then we have to try it out and see which one is the best possible fit sometimes you'll see more than one uh, isotherms uh, might fit the data like we will see in this case now let us see this this is an example where the chemisorption of hydrogen gas on copper powder and the equilibrium data from the experiments at 25 degree centigrade are as follows so the temperature isotherm temperature is 25 degree centigrade and the data that is there is the hydrogen pressure and the volume adsorbed in terms of centimeter cube at 0 degree centigrade and one atmosphere pressure that is there so this is the uh, partial pressure of hydrogen and this is the volume adsorbed these are the two uh, data that we have and the ranges are from 1.05 to 204.8 in terms of millimeter mercury and the volume adsorbed is 0.239 to 1.471 so the way to plot it out and what kind of isotherm fits this data you have not been told so we have to try it out at least for this case all the four isotherms that we know that we will try it out for langmuir then we'll try it out for the other isotherms and we will see one by one what happens so uh, here if you notice that what we have is that we uh, we can fit this for okay let's do it one by one so let's look at the first the langmuir isotherm so in order to understand the fit we we essentially will talk about the uh, the linear form of the equation the linear form of the equation by pa by v is plotted versus p that is there and the slope and the intercept so pa values are directly given in terms of millimeter mercury so what we do after this is that we convert it into atmosphere so how do we do that you know that 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere so you convert it into an atmosphere and why is that because the units would be uh, in terms of atmosphere centimeter cube etc so the partial pressure is in terms of atmosphere and the volume adsorbed is in terms of centimeter cube and then you find out the ratio of pa by v in your third column all of this can be done in an excel spreadsheet whatever it takes you to do in a uh, in like say 10 15 20 minutes in a paper can be done in a very in a matter of few minutes in a case of an excel spreadsheet and then what you do is that you plot this uh, and try to see what what do you plot you plot let me just get my pen pa by v on the y axis versus partial pressure pa 
So this is PA by V versus PA and see what kind of a straight line you get. Here. So you see that this is not a perfect straight line and I have fitted a straight line through this to get that whether it is a straight line or not. And this is my, if I draw a straight line, this is my straight line equation. This is not something that I have, uh, you can find out the slope and intercept and write out this equation when you're doing it by hand. But in the case of an Excel, if you use Excel, you can directly do this plotting. And the R squared value, which shows us how good it, uh, the fit is in terms of a straight line, uh, R squared equal to one is a perfect straight line. So anything closest to that, will tell you that it is a reasonably decent fit, that is a 0.9968. So we can say that, okay, this equation, this uh, set of data so looks like it fits the Langmuir isotherm reasonably well. Now the question is, what next? What about the Freundlich isotherm? So what is the Freundlich isotherm, if you remember? The Freundlich isotherm was theta was equal to k, this is a constant, p a to the power 1 by n. And instead of theta, so what was theta? Theta is my surface coverage. And think about what the information that you have. The information that you have is volume adsorbed, that is V, and versus partial pressure. So partial pressure is there in my equation, fine. But I do not have the volume adsorbed. So what I do is that I write down my surface coverage in terms of volume adsorbed divided by volume at monolayer. So V by Vm. And then you multiply this Vm to the right hand side so v is equal to vm k into pa to the power one by n now you can take log or ln whichever one it is i have taken log uh, from the left hand side and the right hand side so this comes out to be log v is equal to log k into vm both of these are constant terms plus one by n log pa again what is the, the values that we have we have the value of uh, volume of gas adsorbed hydrogen adsorbed and the partial pressure so uh, we know the PA values, again, converted into atmosphere, volume adsorbed, estimate log PA, estimate log B, plot log P on the y-axis and log PA on the x-axis. So if I do that, this is what I get as my figure that is there. Let me see if I can blow it up and show you. Yeah. So this is my y-axis, which is where my log B is uh, present, and this is my log B. Now, if you look at the curve itself, if you look at the points, it definitely does not look like a straight line. These three, four points look like a straight line, but there's a curvature here and there's definitely a curvature here. So if I try to fit in a straight line through all the data points, then I will see that my R square value comes much lower than one. It is 0 0.8941. And this is my slope and intercept. So if looking at this figure only, you realize that, okay, this is not a good fit. So the data that is hydrogen adsorbed and copper it does not fit the Freundling isotherm well. Next comes the Temkin isotherm. In the case of the Temkin isotherm, if you look at it, what do I have? Theta is equal to K1, ln K2, K1 and K2 are the constants into partial pressure. And since we do not directly have the value of theta available to us, so what we do is know or is that V by Vm, that is the ratio, is equal to this. So we multiply Vm to the right hand side. So V is equal to Vm K1 ln K2 into P. Now you uh, open up this uh, ln term and this becomes V is equal to Vm K1 ln into K2 and Vm into K1 ln into P. So these are the, uh, this and now what do you plot now? You plot V versus ln P. V versus ln P. So LNP is in my x-axis and V is in my y-axis. So once you do this plot, so uh, we have the values of partial pressure uh, in millimeter mercury converted to atmosphere. Then we go into volume adsorbed and because that is what is going to be directly plotted on the y-axis uh, and we find out the LNPA for my x-axis. And once you've plotted this line and you draw, try to draw a straight line through it, this is the straight line equation you get and your R squared value. I don't know if you can see it well. I'll blow it up for you. Your R squared value out here comes out to be 0.9954. The first one was 0.9936. So unless you're using a software to do this plotting, you'll not get something so accurate. And this looks more or less a reasonably good straight line equation that we have. So for this case, we can say that uh, both 
Langmuir isotherm and Tenkin isotherm fits the data reasonably well. Now, if you notice that we have not tried to plot the uh, BET isotherm out here, why is that? Because see, in the case of a BET isotherm, we need uh, we need the, the values of PA and V, and along with V uh, with that, we also need the value of the saturation pressure. But of course, you know what gas it is, you know what atmosphere it, uh, what temperature it is. So if you want, you can find out what is the saturation pressure from literature and then use that to do, calculate it and try to plot the BT equation. But since it was not directly given in your problem out here, I have not plotted it out. And so we have just found out the fit between the Langmuir isotherm, the Temkin isotherm and the Freundlich isotherm. And we found out that the data reasonably fits well both the Langmuir isotherm as well as the Temkin isotherm. And if you want to be very nitpicky, you can say that the Langmuir fits even better because it's 0.9968 compared to 0.9954. But that fit is that that is a very uh, small difference that is there. If you ask me, I would say both of them fit the uh, the experimental data reasonably well. So this data can be uh, represented either by the Temkin isotherm or by the Langmuir isotherm. So this is a single gas getting absorbed on a single, so there's one, only one species that is involved. So this is what we have, is that we have the different uh, kinds of possibilities of theta versus partial pressure. And based on that, we have estimated and calculated our uh, the different isotherms, four isotherms that we have learned out here. So what we have done in this chapter, we have tried to understand why do we have absorption happening on a surface because of these unbalanced molecular forces which are there on the surface. And when this adsorption happens, there are two possibilities by which this adsorption might happen. That is physisorption and chemisorption. We have learned about the features of physisorption and the features of chemisorption. Where, which one is used? What is the use of each one of them in terms of experimental uh, estimations? Then we have learned that there are four different isotherms that can be used. The simplest one being Langmuir, which has got several limitations because of the assumptions that we make. And then we learned about three other isotherms, that is the, uh, the Temkin, the Freund Lake, and the BET isotherm. We will talk about the BET isotherm again when we learn how to calculate the surface area of a particular catalyst. So that kind of ends with what I wanted to tell you about this process of adsorption that is there. And uh, so I will uh, stop out here in terms of teaching this section.